Well, this is it. This is the television set of the future. This one's only a prototype, but a model very much like this, but certainly with a television screen only three quarters of an inch thick, will be going on sale sometime next year, and for less than 50 pounds. And when that happens, it seems certain to revolutionize the whole of the television industry. Because a flat screen, large scale television, unlike a conventional television, can simply be hung on the wall instead of bulking large into the room. And that is almost certainly the way that things will happen. Because this television set is the invention of a remarkable man called Clive Sinclair, whose inventions in the past have, in one way or another, affected the lives of every single one of us. Our object is to find people's real needs, to develop products which are of real benefit to people in whatever way, and to do that at a price that they can afford to do for 10p what anyone can do for a pound. Before breakfast every day, Sinclair runs six miles from his home in Cambridge, showing the kind of single-mindedness and stamina which has also allowed him to keep ahead in the consumer electronics field. His list of firsts is staggering, beginning with the first pocket calculator. He followed this with a breakthrough in cheap digital watches, the black watch. Then he brought out his revolutionary two-inch TV, the microvision. And most recently, he's been marketing the first personal computer, the ZX80. The price? just under £100. But Clive Sinclair isn't just a designer and inventor. That slightly vague and boffinish air of his is deceptive. He's also taken on the complex and demanding job of looking after the manufacture of his inventions and selling them in a mass market. It's in this area of commercial activity that some people say that Sinclair is at his weakest, and it's certainly in this field that he's had his only substantial failure to date. Nonetheless, Sinclair has been as ingenious in his business methods, selling by mail order, for instance, as he has been in coming up with one scintillating invention after another. You chose to sell your products then through mail order. Why did you choose that method of marketing? The original reason was that it gave us a low-cost entry to the marketplace. The reason that we've maintained it is that we've found um, that it's the ideal way to introduce a radical product. It's very hard to sell a really new type of product through the shops public aren't aware of its existence, the shops don't know if it'll sell. So if you start off with mail order, it both informs the public of its existence, gets you some early orders, and the shops can learn that the product does have a market. But aren't there limitations to that approach? It's not one that we found to fail and in any case to date. Um, clearly, if the product were too expensive or perhaps too cheap, it, this, this approach wouldn't work. It has to be a particular type of product, though. It must be radically new so that people are so excited by the idea, a proportion of people, that they will send off their money for it. But it does limit you to radically new ideas. Is that well, to your taste? It's, it's, it's the other way around. That, 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 that's what we see as our business. Solder resist side. Yeah. ZX80 is a complete computer selling for just under £100, and it's supplied with a manual. It plugs straight into a conventional television, straight into the aerial socket. There's no modification of the set and if you wish to record your programs into a standard cassette recorder. And the great thing about the ZX80 is that although there were computers before that were available to individuals to buy, they cost several hundreds of pounds. We've brought it down to under a hundred pounds without any sacrifice. You can learn to program on it and subsequently use it perhaps in your job or at work. Is the cheapness of the thing the particular advantage of it? In your the big mind? breakthrough that we've made is to get the cost right down. Um, it is a true and complete computer, and generally speaking, one computer can do much what another one can do. Obviously, it, so is it as efficient as the others on the market? Oh, yes, very much so. And indeed, in terms of speed, which is the only real measure of comparison that's normally made, it's actually faster than, than any of the other personal computers. Now, you've been selling it for just over a year now. How's it going? Well, extremely well. It's now the world's best-selling computer, which in, in just under a year is, we think, a very exciting achievement. And we're selling over 10,000 a month. Most, of course, to export. We sell 4,000 in England a month at the moment and the rest abroad. What kinds of people are buying it and, and what are the main uses they're putting it to? We, our target really at, at, the, at the start has been to sell to people on the basis of learning to program themselves or perhaps for their children to learn to program. 
children are programming very widely now. First of all, so that they can understand computing or perhaps enjoy it. A lot of people it's, it's becoming a hobby for. And secondly, so that they can understand the application of computers at work. Well, they may not use our little computer at work, but they will understand the, the big computer that is used at work. They could use it and can use it in, 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 in a myriad ways. You could store a complete, all your names and addresses of your friends on it and in conjunction with a printer, print out address labels for Christmas cards. Um, a businessman can store his expenses on it and compute them each day. You could store VAT calculations, it, as with any computer indeed. Um, but we wouldn't like to suggest that the home is going to be run by it because we don't feel that's the way computers are going. And the main function is education. The first step is education. The second then comes the period when people will use computers, but they're not going to be able to use them until they've, they've learned about them. And so that's the aspect that we've concentrated on. Second, there will come the large library of programs we're preparing. Now, this used to be the world's smallest television set. It's the Sinclair Microvision, of course, and it's pretty impressively small by anybody's standards. But nonetheless, it does have this, what, six-inch bulky casing behind the television screen. The reason for that is that this television set, in common with all conventional television sets, has its cathode ray tube and its gun behind the television screen. The gun being the thing that transmits the beam onto the screen, and the length of the gun determines the size of the television set. Now, Sinclair's latest trick in the development of this flat tube television set has been to get all the parts and the gun in the same plane as the television screen. And the beams of the gun are bent onto the television screen. The effect of that is that the whole works is only three quarters of an inch thick. At present, Sinclair has got just a pilot production line underway next door to his old premises at the mill. But he says the prospects for the flat tube project are looking good. We've managed to make the tube very cheap to produce because it uses only two pieces of glass, one of which is vacuum formed, another one which is flat. We silk screen on the electrodes and we have an automated assembly. So our flat tube will actually be cheaper to produce than a conventional picture. So the final set will cost less than 50 pounds for a set that will work anywhere in the world with radio built in as well. What kinds of extensions might there be of the, of the principle? Well, this is just a first step. There's nothing to stop us making larger pictures. The principle is applicable to bigger pictures, to big, big, bigger screen sizes. We can incorporate it in computers, which we plan to do, and we can use it in a projection mode for really large wall pictures in full colour in the future. When do you expect that it'll go on sale? 82 for the, for the pocket set, the time delay being caused by the need to build the automated plant, and then we couldn't say when we'll have a large colour set, but it'll be some years after that. And will this be available by direct sales again? How we'll launch it, I don't know, but it, it'll, it, it, even if it's initially by direct sales, it'll certainly be in the shops soon afterwards. There's something I want to put to you that's been said to me by people in the city. They've said that you'd be better off if somebody put you in a back room and locked you in and you got on with your inventions and somebody else looked after the business end of things. Well, if that happened, the products would never get onto the market because nobody has ever come to me and said, that's a fantastic new product, I shall now go and market it for you. And the thing is that the computer side, not, not the computer business, for example, is extremely profitable. We, we had 13 years of unbroken profitability at Radionics, and we've, we're a highly profitable business now. So we do know how to make money as well as the products. <laughs>